Good afternoon, Ms. Ellaby. This is Vita Simmons. Yes, a tea and reception for the members of the Wednesday Forum. You might say program tea. My mother, you know, the lady, Marcella Penny Dow, pioneer cultural leader. She came here by Oxtime as a child and founded the Wednesday Forum. Myrtle, how many would you say? Seventy-five at least. Say a hundred. Seventy-five. Miss Tewksbury is a soloist, accompanied by Miss Wilda McCurdy, accompanist. Mother, Miss Tewksbury is almost finished with her number. She'll do an encore. What if she doesn't get a lot of applause? I've known her for years. She'll do an encore. <laughs> you might say that I'm entertaining, assisted by my daughter, Miss Myrtle Mae Simmons. Oh, what color would you call that? Rancho Rose, they told me. Miss Myrtle Mae Simmons looked charming in a modest Rancho Rose tone crepe, picked up at the girl with a touch of magenta on emerald. I wish you could see her, Miss Ellerby. Mother, please, she's almost finished. And where's the caterer? Everything is ready. As soon as she finishes singing, we'll open the dining room doors and begin pouring. The parlors and the halls are festooned with smilex. Yes, festooned. That's right, Miss Ellerby. This is the first party we've had in years. There's a reason, but I don't want it in the papers. We all have our troubles, Miss Ellerby. The guest list. Oh, yes. Mother, come. If you'll excuse me now, Miss Ellerby, I'll call you later. Mother, Mrs. Chauvinet just came in. Mrs. Eugene Chauvinet, Sr. Her father was a scout with Buffalo Bill. So that's where she got that hat. Myrtle. Be kind, Mrs. Chauvinet. Have the grandson about your age. What difference will it make? With Uncle Albert. Remember, we agreed not to talk about that this afternoon. The whole point of this party is to get you started. We'll work through the older women and get to the younger group. We can't have anyone here in the evenings. And that's where men come to see you. In the evenings. The only reason we can even have a party this afternoon is because Uncle Elwood is playing Pinochle at the 4th Avenue Firehouse. Thank God for the firehouse. I know, but they'll just have to invite you. It won't hurt them one bit. You've got so much to offer. I don't care what anyone says. There's something sweet about every young girl. And a man takes that sweetness and look what he does with it. But you've got to meet somebody, Myrtle. That's all there is to it. If I do, they say, that's Myrtle Mason. Her uncle is Elwood P. Dowd, the biggest screwball in town. Elwood P. Dowd and his pal. You promised. All right, let's get them into the dining room. Now, when the members come in here and you make your little welcome speech on behalf of your grandmother, be sure to do this. And then after that, I mention my uncle Elwood and say a few words about his pal Harvey. Damn Harvey! That's right, Myrtle May, like everybody in the Wednesday Forum hear you. You said that name. You promised you wouldn't say that name, and you said it. I'm sorry, Mother, but how do you know Uncle Albert will come in and introduce Harvey to everyone? Myrtle May, this is unkind of you. Oh, it is the biggest party I have. Even if people do call him peculiar, he's still my brother, and he won't be home this afternoon. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. But, Mother, why can't we look like other people? Must I remind you again? Elwood is not living with us. We are living with him. Living with him and Harvey? Did Grandmother know about Harvey? I've wondered and wondered about that. She never wrote me if she did. Why did she have to leave all her property to Uncle Elwood? I suppose it's because she died in his arms. People are always sentimental about things like that. You always say that and it doesn't make sense. She couldn't make out a role after she died, could she? Don't be didactic, Myrtle May. It's not becoming in a young woman. Men love it. Now, don't forget to wave your hands. I'll do my best. Oh, dear, Miss Tewksbury's voice is certainly fading. Not fast enough. Lovely, Miss Tewksbury. Perfectly lovely. I loved it.
Harvey, it does sound to you? Harvey says it sounds fine to him also. Yes, two subscriptions. Mail everything to this address. I hope I'll get the opportunity to meet you sometime, my dear. Harvey, you said you'd like to meet me. When? When would you like to meet me? Well, why not right now? My sister seems to be having a few friends in, and we would consider it an honor if you would come and join us. My sister will be delighted. It's 343 Temple Drive. Hope to see you in a very few minutes, my dear. <clears throat> Goodbye. Harvey, she said she's coming right over. We better freshen up. Don't you think so? Yes, so do I. Pretend we're having a game of chuckle. When you catch his eye, tell me he 
always comes when I call him. Now, do you see him yet? No, not yet. How do you do, Mrs. Cummings? Smile, can't you? Have you no pride? I'm smiling and he's my brother. Oh, Mother. People get run over by trucks every day. Why can't something like that happen on Uncle Elwood? <laughs> this is unkind of you. This thing is not your uncle's fault. Out, you're sticking me with that pin. That's Miss Ellery. Keep looking, keep smiling. Mrs. Cummings is leaving. Uncle Elwood must have told her what Harvey is. Oh, God. Good afternoon, Mrs. Vita Simmons. Should you come in the clothes you have on? What have you on? Who is this? But I don't know any Miss Greenwald. Should you what? May I ask who invited you? Mr. Dowell. Thank you just the same, but I believe there has been a mistake. Well, I never. Never what? One of your uncle's friends. She telephoned and asked if she should bring a quart of gin to the Wednesday forum. There he is. He's talking to Mrs. Halsey. Is Harvey with him? What do you to ask? <laughs> 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 Chapter 